you know, he had a, a very strong day. Beat Sinai too, strong, uh, relatively local player. And now he's in loser. So having just lost three to one, uh, he is at risk now of going 0 2 in top eight, which you never want to do. And Phenom, you know, he beat Momochi 2 0. He beat Goichi uh, 3 to 1. I love Phenom. Is always looks like he's always laughing at something, you know? <laughs> Alex Go Myers, of course, very, very serious expression, but here we go. By the way, congrats to Phenom on his 21st birthday. Man. <laughs> It's a young man's game. It's yeah. a young man's game. Alex Meyer is relatively an old man compared to these guys, you know? Yeah. He can officially drink alcohol some years ago in Norway. <laughs> okay, back medium punch, anti-air gonna trade. That's just a testament of how good uh, Nikali's jump attacks are. Oh, standing medium punch and gets to the other side. Look at this harassment. Oh, oh that's oh, gonna no. hit, yeah. Not in time. And since you have Phenom, it says, you know what? You know what? When that happened, Alex Myers just nodded his head. Yeah. How did That's I enough! That? And there it is. Gets the stun into the kill. Alex Myers taking round one. This is the round toughest thing. Two. When you're on a hot streak and you're beating all these tough players, and then all of a sudden you lose the Haitani and get sent to loser's bracket, like sometimes things kind of fall apart. I'm not, it wasn't Haitani. It was, uh, who did he lose to in the winter side, you said? Are you talking about? Cien, yeah, yeah. yeah. When, you, when you lose to someone like Cien, all of a sudden, once you get to loser side, it's very easy to just kind of be down on yourself, to be thinking so much about that loss, and then not to play to play kind of under to your under your peak performance. So Alex Myers really has to make sure he gets over that. Meanwhile, Phenom just came off of a win, so hey. he's feeling good about himself right now. And he's been doing well. I mean, he beat Momochi even before that, so it's a great weekend for him. He did go in afterward, but was not busted too badly for it. anti not there, so Phenom converts as bad as well as he could. All right, now trying to hit buttons after no. the crouching medium oh. punch. Ooh, not punished the time. Yeah, Phenom wasn't quite there. Phenom now going back and forth, back and forth. This is still a dangerous Alex Myers, though. If he can get in, yeah. he has the super. Oh, Especially now, if he can find one more yeah. hit, he might be able to take it. He didn't want to uppercut super just yet, because no. he wanted one more. Ooh, Ooh. James. Will he continue? Gray life. Getting back. Oh, oh boy. but Phenom is so good at the standing medium kick in the walk up throw. How many rounds have we seen him take with that now? Standing medium kick and then walk up throw to Why take not? the round. It's a pretty good option. Yeah, so many people are so like they they lean towards just keep continuing going for frame traps at the end of rounds, but Phenom is the one guy who will commit to the throw at the end of rounds so often. Oh wow, nice walk back and a whip punish from Alex. Nice. Phenom pressuring very, very well. Oh, and he gets it. Oh man, like I said, he's so willing to commit to the throw in game winning situations. I just, I feel like that's one of the things that people need to get that read on him about, you know? Yeah, I mean, you might know that about him, but still, question is, is he gonna do command grab or not? Yep. That, it's just one of those things. That's why I was saying before, blocking sucks. You don't want to block <laughs> in this game. You want to have the movement instead. And Alex Myers was doing a great job of that in the first round, but as things went on, Phenom found much better timings to move forward, to jump in, to make his will be the one that carried the day. Look at that, very unusual timing for the size mode. A big part of why it works. Oh. He pressed medium kick there, what? And he and Alex got the counter hit on the stand light kick too. Could have confirmed in the crouch light kick in the full drill combo, but nothing. And every time he goes for that back medium punch, he gets a nice. trade and yeah, beautiful stuff. When you see Kami's activate that V trigger, just keep walking away from him, jump away. Look, you. Oh, he's not quite there. Alex has a chance still, but Phenom has been so good at about this hit and run stuff. Nice confirm, yeah, I saw it was gonna be a whip punish. Gets the throw in here, doesn't commit to anything. You see after the fourth throw, he just walked out. up and did nothing. Look, that is the movement. It happened twice in that round. Phenom backdashed in expectation of a, of a dive kick coming in. He got the punish once. That is what you need to do. You can't be there. Right. The question is not how to deal with 50-50 mix-ups. The question is, how can you avoid being in that position? Okay, that's the second time Alex has done that now. He's walked backwards, oh man. Hand throw once again, EX into the corner. Here comes Phenom, gets one throw. Oh, and Alex actually texts this time. There you go. But now here's the seismo pressure. And look at this, Phenom just not letting up. Like I said, he just doesn't ever want to lose this momentum. Nice, and he has the ability and a character who, who doesn't. Okay, finally backs off because he realizes he didn't want to push too hard. 
now. And also the way he's moving, it's tough for Alex to get something like Patrick Pierce. Patrick Pierce relatively slow, doesn't have the best range, and Phenom hasn't been in that range. Nice block on the cross under. Oh, okay. No, nothing, no follow-up from Alex. In the corner now. He got too out of the corner. Far, but yeah, too too close, I should say. Super that. coming in for Phenom, and when it does, Chip is gonna be an issue. Oh, he got him in the super, and you know what? Alex Myers is gonna make the comeback here on this round. So Alex Myers staying alive here in game number two, takes it to one one apiece. However, oh, wow. Phenom, the one sitting on all the meter right now. So if he just gets one hit right now, he may go into critical art right away yeah. to start the round essentially with a with a half-life lead. Okay, Alex getting the throw now. That's the beauty of uh, Kami's light light buttons. It just doesn't push her that far back. And great aim with those dive kicks from yeah. Alex Myers and gets the counter hit confirmed. Alright, you know, getting out of there at least. And he pressures. Alex Myers thought it was time for buttons. No. Doesn't do a quick rise. It wasn't time for buttons there oh either. Oh my god. So one meter, two meter, three meter, got the stun. Spending all that bar, and there you can see a good reason not to save your meter for uh, critical art all the time. So now Alex has got to find a way in. Ooh, you know, I think that waiting. was supposed to be an uppercut. He's going to get the hit on this that. This is a big chance for Alex Myers, actually. Yeah, this... He, he just doesn't want to get activated on. Oh, yeah, no. Alex Myers has been jumping at people in corners a lot. Yeah, well, Nikali I think that was really about him wanting to not get activated on. In that situation, many Nikali's will bring out Rana's Activate or something like that. And he just didn't want to be there. But he jumped at a spot where Phenom knew. Yep. Phenom walked under it, jab. Round one. So very nice anticipation Fight. by Phenom. He's been ready for all of this. Now 2-0. Like I said, for Alex, the chance to go 0-2 in top 8. It's happened to him in the past. And yes. uh, it might happen again. Because like I said, it's tough. Because when you lose that winner side matchup after getting here and being so excited to be doing so well, and then you lose that first match, it can really affect you a lot. And Alex Myers has not been going for enough throws. I feel like Phenom knows that oh, he can yes. block so much, and Phenom, just like he said to Goichi, why are you trying to do Wake Up EXs on me? Like, I am the Wake Up EX god, but... Hold on, though. It's not enough. Alex not Myers enough. now with a chance. Phenom's still deadly. Oh, but that... Crouching medium punch, standing medium punch, both of those buttons for Nikali, just buffering that into disc guidance all the time. Yeah. Those things are so good at controlling space. And you know what? We've often given credit, to, you know, in season one to infiltration for playing Nash like he's on ice skates and stuff. I feel like Phenom does very similar with Nikali. He's dashing like 60% of the time for his movement. You see the double back dash right there? Look, if you look at Haitani, he does the same kind of thing. That it's becoming more and more common. Not just Nikali either. You just have to move in this game. That's what it's mm -hmm. about. Pressure now for Alex. This is where he wants to be finally. Into the corner though! Oh. Will that be the death of him? Maybe. One more mix up. One more. Where is it going? He blocks it. Okay. Doesn't choose to use any meter. Oh! Look, that wasn't a crush. crush. Yeah, it wasn't a crush counter. He really does want that. I've seen him go for it many times this mm -hmm. weekend. Few camis will bring it out now, but he doesn't. Phenom is alive. He's trying to build his own super. He's close to just getting the kill anyway. Maybe on the what back the dash. Heck? Oh yes! my god! There. Alex Myers with a raw critical heart hey. on the. <laughs> We've been extolling the virtues of movement. Maybe there are some downsides too. Quit listening to us, Alex Myers. <laughs> Oh, man. All right, so Alex Myers staying alive, but right now, one of his biggest weaknesses has definitely been cornering himself repeatedly. Yeah. He's got to stop that. Yeah. He does go in. I love it. Oh, he has done stun. EXTP okay. in that situation many times, but Alex not dissuaded. Okay, spends one of his one of his bars. Very close now for Phenom if he gets two combos, James. Let's see. <laughs> Especially on a 900 health character like this. And now he's just going to throw a bunch because he knows Alex is scared of that critical art. Oh no, with punish on the size mode that time from Myers. He usually has really great reactions with that. Alex Myers I definitely is a high reaction cami player. He's keeping his eyes on whether Phenom actually moves. Oh my god, he tried to go in with that EX Mulligan and As he a result, spends his no bar. More EX. Yeah, if he gets knocked down now, he's not going to have oh that. My oh god, boy, one Phenom. more hit. Phenom. Can he make it happen? Yeah, yes! Oh, no! Where's the confirm? 
can't believe it. Very, very rare to see that kind of thing out of Phenom. He can still do this, though. There's no viewer. Oh my god, he, he accidentally jumped backwards instead of forward to do the dive kick. But if Phenom sees Alex Myers jump, just jump away yourself, Nikali. Because, oh, the delay from the dive kick. Oh, boy. And even Phenom was like, ooh, I can't believe that worked, Nikali but I'll take did. it. And there is the weakness of going for the back medium punch. Yes. And right there, if Alex hadn't spent that one meter on the dive on the hooligan, he could have went for an EX uppercut in that situation, and that would have beat delay or not well, delay. Well, I think he was just doing the back strong there. I think he just thought it was the right call. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, because I think he did have EX meter at the right. end. Yeah, and he, see he right did. there, he missed it. He missed it. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. right. He did have the meter. Yeah. So he was just trying to do the back medium punch. But this is why the dive kicks are so important because they put that pause in the air and they give the anti-air button enough time to whiff you like see these? that. Oh! You see the, the dashes? The dash, the dash. The dash, the dash. The dash, the dash. Then the walk jump. That's, it doesn't sound like a mix-up, okay? But it is. <laughs> it is. You have to play with your positioning. It's a huge part of fighting games. And he played with his positioning well enough that after having set that up, Alex Myers moved into a range where he could have dealt with it, and instead right. it was the jump. And that's the thing, right? So the way you get jump-ins jump is to occupy the opponent thinking about your ground game. Yeah. And a lot of people think, you know, you got to poke, you got to whiff punish, but Nikali is such a threat on the ground from the dashes, especially in V-Trigger because yeah. he's so fast, right? <laughs> that he's, as long as he's just dashing around like that, that is a threat. That's basically the subterfuge. You're like, look at me, look at me, and then you just get the jump in all of a sudden. And that's why Alex would, did not have the EX uppercut in mind. Instead, he just went for, what is Punk, what is Justin doing? Was he thinking about using Birdie against... Hey, he actually told me yesterday that he is thinking about picking up Birdie, but I think it was more like, in the future, I might pick up Birdie rather than... My Birdie is sick enough to play against Punk in the top eight. But we'll see. I don't we'll know. See. We're do we're getting this situation here. Oh, okay, no, Justin says, you know what, no. It is, it, is ah, a, it is a matchup that Birdie probably wins over Karen, but I, I just don't think that Justin has that ready yet. Yeah. Maybe someday, but right now, Karen Karen is where he's lining up. And thank you, Justin, for not picking also Red Karen, because <laughs> that would have been kind of confusing. For yeah, him. sorry, Keats. Oh, All right, so this is Losers. Punk has just been on a tear. He mm. beat Snake Eyes 3-0. He beat Ricky Ortiz 2-0. He beat Daigo 2-0. He beat Shaohai 2-0. He beat Vagabond 2-0. That is an incredible Jesus. resume over the last several it's matches like he's Capcom had. Capcom Cup and EVO Champions and... and it's, it's remarkable. So he's clearly on a tear and it's going to be tough for Justin to stop that momentum. Already Punk has the corner. We've mentioned too that look, Punk is, I think, the, the top Karen in the world right now. And a lot of people are talking about how to emulate his style and Justin as well has talked about it too. I thought Justin was doing it earlier this weekend, but in top eight didn't seem like it. He's got to have the very quick change to control things better, to optimize better. The interesting thing to me right now about Punk, though, is that, I mean, he's usually pretty, uh, uh, you know, jovial guy. Always has a smile on his face. But right now, he is, like, serious mode. Oh, yeah. Well, it's in top eight, and he's used that serious mode to get through an incredible gauntlet, like we said. So he's keeping it up so far. Round one goes to him. Right. Pay attention to this neutral game because they both, are, I think, are very, very strong in, in footsies. But the way that Punk optimizes the footsies, what he whip punishes with, what he pressures with and moves with, it's just so tough for anybody to deal with, even one of the all-time greats, Justin Wong. It's just, just this button timing that Punk has that's so Look at that. Do you see the whip punish? Yeah. you see him walk out of the roundhouse? You know in that situation, you, Karen wants Roundhouse Activate. That's what she wants. Yeah. He knows that as well as anybody, and so he takes the tiniest step outside <laughs> of Roundhouse range well, and then hits his like own in expectation. I don't know that that's a straight whiff punish. That's really tough. But he did, in fact, get the button out with a timing where if Justin had pressed Roundhouse, his Roundhouse works. Even that's earlier okay. in the first round. Okay, there's a little bit if of a smile. If you did a reaction, there, yeah, shout yeah, out yeah. to uh, you, uh, bud. But uh, earlier in the round, he got into a range where he knew Justin wanted to go for that V-Skill because Karens love that V-Skill. And he immediately backdashed out of that range and out came the V-Skill and what happened? Immediate whiff punish with the crouch heavy kick. So you're right. Punk is good at walking into your range so that you are willing to attack him and then he just backs out. 
he, the reason why he whiff punishes so well is because he's not just raw reacting to you hitting buttons. He's trying to get you to hit the buttons. He's, he baits you. He, he will dangles that bait in front of you. And now it looks like Justin's going to go with Chun-Li. And this is a character that Punk has actually told Justin. He feels like Justin should use Chun-Li. And if he does, then, Jun, then Justin will win some events. He says he doesn't think Justin can win events with Karen. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I know that Punk and Justin played a lot when Punk went up to Justin's place in running California. So they have a lot of experience against each other. Oh, the shimmy stuff gets the, gets the punish. And keeping Punk just Justin harassing. in the corner, yeah. yeah. Look at this range where he's attacking from. Comes in with the B-Skill, after that backing off again. Oh, he does walk into a button though. Justin, nice confirm. But see, this is the reason why like, uh, Chun-Li might work for Justin in this matchup, because Chun-Li has the range of buttons. When you have the same range as Punk, and as great as Justin is, I don't think he's outputting Punk. Doesn't seem like But it. if he has a character with the range that Chun-Li has, perhaps he can do a better job keeping Punk out. You can see it's, it's working out really well so far. Oh boy. That was safety first stuff for most of it until just at the end, but right after, fine, get away. Just get out of there. Oh, yeah, there we go, that stand heavy punch. Punk trying to take advantage of the block towards medium punch by dashing in where Justin had a standing fierce waiting for him. Justin now sitting on a full meter. Okay, so a little bit of forward movement too after a lot of walking backwards in the previous round. And because of that, I think Punk not expecting it. Justin backing away. So it's this back and forth again. We've seen that from almost everybody. Couple of walk-up throws from Justin now. Yeah, you can see how Punk's movement has been hampered so much by the footsie range that Chun-Li has. Yeah, it's really constrained. Oh, <laughs> Justin Wong with the standing fierce and a critical art for max punish. And Punk with the literal eyes open blinky blink on reaction <laughs> to it. Literally, that's what he did. <laughs> And a smile from Punk, and he's like, damn it, I should have never told Justin to use Chun-Li. Man, if only this commentator wasn't up there cursing me. <laughs> and Justin Wong there, sitting off to the side, he knows that that wasn't anything. That's, like, it's not a message sent. No. He knows that he still has a long road ahead of him. This is loser's side, so the loser of this will be sent home. And look at this, Punk now saying, go to character select. Okay, I wonder what the change is. He certainly has a l nice little cast that he can pick from. We've seen Nash from him, we've seen Cambi from him. We've seen more than that. You're in. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what he does. <laughs> but I, I did like Justin's play nah, a lot. Looks like Nash. it is going to be the Interpol match okay. here. So if, if Justin's solution was to try to outrange Punk, Maybe Punk's solution is to try to play at ranges that Chun-Li has problems with. Outside of her buttons? No, that's not even what it's going to be after all. It's going to be Karen again. Oh, okay. But uh, look, about Justin's play, there was a lot of moving backwards and, and not being in a range at all where Karen could challenge, both on the ground and in the air. And she mm -hmm. has really good jump normals, so Justin was at a range where he could... Round one. You know, not even anti-air. It wasn't even an issue. Chun-Li's lack of anti-air, or not lack, but worse anti-air, didn't even come up. That said, Punk comes in. Ah, not a good start for Justin. Got this. Justin was barely in the corner in the last game. Oh, that jumping heavy kick. Great jump attack from Chun-Li as well. Didn't chase down the jump back OS quick enough. Yeah, I think he tried with that fierce. It would have been yeah. pretty sick. Now, Justin, the V-trigger for Chun-Li is severely nerf you can see the timer just runs right out really fast and justin overreached a little bit punk got some damage no oh he slugs. God, yeah and, and chun li can punish sweeps like almost regardless of range yeah oh do you see the whip the whip os from punk mm -hmm. just throwing out that stand medium punch and says you know what if you stick out a button and i hit you i'm gonna combo into tenko actually that might have just been a raw whip punish Justin's got to remember what he did in the first game. He was outside of Karen's ranges, jumping and ground. And he went in more. Not that he even got to decide the spacing a lot of that round, but he did go in at the start of it. Now that roundhouse is on deck. You know Punk wants to activate. There it is. Yep, gets the activation and goes up for the throw. Now Justin in the corner. Ooh. Gets out of there, smart. Yeah, just uses the wall bounce. He did go in. Wow, okay. Yeah, okay. Looking for a butt. I mean, if these two have played each other a lot, there's a lot of uh, mind games that we're not 
aware of right now. Absolutely. They know each other's tendencies already. Yes. Justin sitting on a V trigger. Hasn't had a chance to activate. Oh my god, Puck just outside of range. There we go. Justin gets the activation. Very important activation too because now he can get his back away from the corner and he can get the spacing again. Oh, and the confirm! No. Wow! Uh, oh, and this is not even the punish from Punk! What's going on there? Both these guys expect to have all their stuff on deck. No whiff punish. Very close, though. Punk's still super dangerous. If you can find a crashing medium kick. Justin has locked himself too much into the corner right now. Oh, get, oh, and he got the instant air head stop. Wow. Just, I mean, that's... It's something that you don't see often from Justin. Yeah. So uh, Punk was not uh, looking for it. And <laughs> very smart of Justin to bring it out at that kind of time. Yeah, I, I wonder if that towards medium punch, is this supposed to hit three times? I, I I only saw two hits from it. Maybe that's why it didn't connect, because it definitely looked like it's something that Justin was confident was going to connect. But Justin escapes that round because Punk just missed his punish. It definitely can't work. Mm. Yeah, smart. Just use that V versus again. It could have been thrown, but it was activated after the... Oh, he went for EX Fireball, got thrown out of it! Hey! And there again. Super's ready. Just get away. Yeah, Justin's got to figure out a way out of this corner now. Right, because if the if the idea... Oh, he, he wanted to walk to get under. under. He tried to get under. Yeah, not going to happen. That'll be that. If, if the idea is to try to outrange Karen, you can't do it if you're in the corner. Mm -hmm. You just don't have that option. So the game for him has to be win. about ev evading that situation. No, Justin thinking about it. Is he going to character switch or is he going to stick with Chun-Li? I mean, if it's the choices between Karen and Chun-Li, I would stick with Chun-Li. Well, he's gone to character select, so we'll see what he ends up doing here. Is he thinking about going to Birdie? He did take a game off Punk, which uh, some of the all-time luminaries did not do this <laughs> week. <laughs> but that's the first time he's lost a game in a while, yeah, so... Yeah. No, he is going to stick with Chun, but instead, he is going to the classic Chun-Li. Chun -Li. Let's begin. Yeah, Punk only lost a game to Magneto 1080p and then now to Justin after, again, having beaten Vagabond, Shaohai, Daigo, Ricky Ortiz, Snake Eyes without losing a game. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It is. It is. And very uh, impressive. Like, like we mentioned, he is definitely Round in one. the running for best Street Fighter player Fight. on the planet. I remember when he bodied Fudo at NCR, Fudo, in fact, said afterwards, Punk is the best on the planet right now. Right now he's doing exactly what he wants to do. The corner, like we said, was super important for him. He got there almost immediately. He got the stun almost immediately. Now Justin is fighting from way behind. I don't know if he's even going to get a chance. That was just set play, set play, set play. Like I said, you don't want to block in this game. You don't want to be defensive at all if you can avoid it. At all, you have to play the control and the movement. If you get hit and you get knocked down, almost anybody in this game can take you out. And Punk is one round away now, and yeah, when Karen gets you in the corner like that, it just pretty much doesn't even matter what character you're using. Right, yeah, I mean, he for Akuma or Chun, whatever. Right. We've seen all of them in the last couple of matches. Okay, not going to be able to confirm anything off of that double crouching light kick. So I love this ground movement by Punk. There was a lot of bulldog. You see that? Walk a block, walk a block. It's almost like he's a grappler trying to come in. Oh, man. All right, back here. Guess what? You're in the corner again, Justin. And see what I mean? The button timing from Punk is so good. And he's tried to anti-air people out of the corner. I think he's looking for crouching strong activate right there. It didn't come. Yeah. yeah. Backdash gets busted. Oh, the light kick. It traded, though. And now here comes Punk sitting on a critical arc. Ooh. Oh, what a chase down. And now we're back to this mid-screen. So at least for Justin, that's what he wants. EX, that just was like that. That's a far throw. Oh Punk God. is in there. He needs one more hit, Justin. Needs a couple. Oh, oh really? Dash up EX legs, not enough to kill. Oh, what a block on the overhead. I don't even think that was a punish on that EX. I, I think punish it should be actually. It's supposed to be, but I, I didn't feel like it was to me. But you know what? Justin's gonna stay alive here. Oh, wow, that by was the skin a nail biter. Teeth. Yeah. If he can take this round just like that, it's two two. It feels like this has been all punk, but actually it's closer than that. Skin, but punk with a non cancel on that stand medium punch with punish. Oh, that was too far. Interesting. Okay. Punk already has the corner again. Yeah, you know what? That Look at this fight, though, from Justin. That V trigger is not exactly the greatest thing from Chun Li, so just spend all the meter for your rever V reversals. And Punk knows that Justin wants the V reversal yeah. again. Grab, grab, grab. How many times? 
Are we going to set the record here? Are we setting the record, That's James? Fine. Okay, Justin's still willing to block it out. He got oh, it! and a confirm from Punk. You can raw confirm off of just the one hit from the shoulder. He caught Justin pressing buttons. That's it right there, Justin and Alex Myers coming in Coming on the in. winner side of the bracket, yeah. both going 0-2 yeah. afterwards. I, I just love so much how Punk dealt with what Justin's game plan was. It was, it was as we said, to try to evade better, uh, to outrange Karen, right. and it was a style from Punk to walk slowly, walk slowly, button occasionally, walk slowly until he got the corner. There were two throws. command dashes into shoulder, there was just great patience on the way in. Once he got there, like you said, you were bringing Four. up your reversal at this time as well. Clearly what Justin was bringing out and Punk five in a row with the grabs and then excellent confirm afterward. If you can confirm crouching medium kick into stuff, you can definitely confirm that button. Yeah. I mean, that's the he thing. He actually might have... I don't know. That was very fast, actually. I wonder if he was just doing <laughs> it. But uh, I guess I can't put anything past this kid. Yeah, that's just the thing. Is Like I said, he saw that Justin just did two re-reversals. Right. And he used that information like, okay, Justin's just going to try to V-reversal yep. everything, try to get me off of him. So I'm just going to keep throwing a bunch of times. And it worked. It I worked exactly how he wanted to. Got five throws, and that put Justin on his heels. Got him just enough to that range where the shoulder into critical art was going to kill. Right, right. So, so uh, the way that Punk dealt with Justin's attempt to be away was I just felt it was so it was like somebody it was like seeing somebody who has had years of trying to get in on ST guy with Honda walk walk <laughs> walk walk like occasional yeah, jump yeah 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 uh -huh. that kind of thing but uh, he hasn't had that he's just figured it out on his own uh, as he has in almost every matchup uh, he is such a strong player to bring out that kind of bulldogging against a character like Chun very very impressive so he stays on the sticks it's now going to be him versus bx3 phenom in losers semis after that we're going to run the winners finals keep in mind it's razor sien versus grpt haitani two players like you said who have won premieres so far <laughs> punk also up in that uh, level of play That's phenom <laughs> he did it last year well, they we say have. this game doesn't have consistency, James, <laughs> and I am very skeptical of that. <laughs> well, we have three players here who are premier winners waiting here to see if they can get a second one. Yeah. Phenom trying to get his first one here in Season 2. Correct. In Season 2. But again, two players here you can see right now, just they're so young, both of these guys. Like you said, just turned 21, did Phenom, and of course... <laughs> Punk still, what, 18, That's 19? years in the future. Yeah. Years in the future. <laughs> That's like a whole one-sixth of his life. Right, that feels like forever. Exactly, exactly. You see the two players here having a good laugh, discussing some stuff. So looking for Nikali versus Karen. Some people, like we said before, will go with somebody else rather than Karen, but I don't think that's going to be the case for Punk. He's just been so strong. No real need to change things up. He did beat no Noble Vagabond. I assume it was with Karen, although I didn't see it. But there's a, a strong Nikali that he took out along the way. Now we have these final four. Phenom Punk and Sien Haitani. Those are players from four different countries. Those are players with uh, uh, different styles. Haitani and Phenom have the same character, Nikali, but not the same style, really. More, more on the active you know, sort of offensive end of things, but Haitani also shows times where he was willing to play very patiently. Right. It's interesting because both Phenom and Haitani both kind of willing to throw caution to the wind. Sure, they, they can both play risky. Sure. But, it, but it's weird because I still feel like they play very different style Nikali. Yeah, you, know? yeah. you, you can, you can have risk be a commonality among different styles, but I would say one of the big things, and I've been harping on this, is that all four of these guys have fantastic movement. Yep. So we have Loser's Semis coming up. Winner will move into Loser's Finals. Loser is out of here. But definitely watch how Round much one. more, like, Phenom. I mean, Fight. we'll see if he does this here, but Phenom is very dash heavy. Punk is more willing to just kind of walk you down into the corner. Great. Oh, my God. He had to confirm on the counter hit and the stand heavy bunch. Yep, looking Ooh. for it. Look at this. Already the corner. But oh, Phenom, blank. Phenom's mission is accomplished. He already has trigger. Yep. And nice, he, nice play by Phenom to get trigger. And he even got one of those EX uppercuts to catch on Punk. 
Now Punk's still harassing there. Blocks it out. Safety first stuff. Look at his corner control. Just hanging. Man. It, it was not it was not like he was pressing pressing in that situation. He was just at a range where he could control. And if he saw Phenom jump, okay, no big deal. If he saw him on the ground, alright, react. Yeah, I can honestly say like once Punk gets you into the corner, it feels like prison. It is like a jail there. You're in cage. Because it's so hard to get out of there, but Phenom manages to do that with a well-placed standing heavy kick crush, crush counter. Oh, well, here comes Punk. Right back in here. Guess what? We're in the corner, so that's one throw, but yeah, not going to go for multiple. That's punishable. So Phenom going to get some good damage off that. Just goes for Ooh. one uppercut because he wants to save the meter. Very close. For Punk. Ooh, oh, okay, no, he didn't see it. Yeah, he was. Oh, but you know what? He got it anyway. And of course, Punk rather would go for the EX combos because I bet you it's more fun for him to do than just go to the critical I art. Win. Punk takes game number one. He did all yeah. the things he needed to do. And that second round, sure, certainly, you know, looked better. But still, yeah. lots of great control and reactions He's and awareness by, by Punk. We always say a win is a win, right? Four. But unfortunately, so a loss is also a loss. So even though he looked better on there, wasn't able to take that round. So it can be encouraging, like, hey, I did better. But it also can be discouraging, like, man, I did a lot better and I still lost. Look at that spot. He reacts to the jump so well. But Phenom with the great button choice. A lot of people who feel caged there, they will try to look for a way out with a jump or with something like that. But buttons are often a better solution, and that was a great time to work out. That's twice now that he has managed to get out of the corner by using the heavy kick crush counter. Oh, nice. There's that delay on that dive kick that he used to beat Alex. Okay, Punk got what he could do. Slowly chasing down. Super! Yes, built it. And again, he did this sort of chase down style. And, and uh, although in that second round of the first game, Phenom had some great pressure. Other than that, it has mostly been him on the back foot, mm -hmm. being chased, having to deal with being cornered, looking for ways out rather than actively looking for what he wants. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, uh, you know, Phenom does want the momentum. Punk, probably one of the best at taking momentum away from you. Oh, and twice. you know what? I feel like this in this top eight, those two times were the first time anyone has blocked uh, Phenom's wake up EX uppercut. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I keep joking that Phenom says he's the master of that, but Punk's saying like, nah, uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I'd love uh, to see that percentage to retro. I'm the alpha. I'm the alpha, he says. You know, I'm trying to outrange. I love the jump timing there. And Punk Locking is just under, yeah. patiently, just not overcommitting. Not doing anything too wild, waiting it out. He knows Phenom needs to make the approach. What? What a whiff punish. Sweep at that oh spot. Man. He's so he ready. Was, he was waiting for it. So he was ready. waiting for it. And that's the thing is I think when Punk was sitting there, he was just like, you know what? He's going to try to use my lack of buttons as a method of getting in. And he was just waiting. And yeah, there it was. As soon as he dashed forward, he had the throw all ready to go. How many situations now have, have been like that? Punk being in a confident spot and just playing there. Round reacting one. to a jump, Fight. reacting to a dash, occasionally his own button, but not overpressing. That's such strong play. Oh, Again! Man. Yeah. Baiting that out, and unfortunately, even though with no invincibility, still a crush counter. He punished that with Fierce? Yeah, Punk uses Karen Stan Fierce like nobody else. Nobody else. Phenom again is in oh, this spot. Wow, well, that round is barely missing. Yeah, see, there you go. Now Punk connects with the wake up EX. Phenom has just been living in that left corner. Hey, you know what? To Justin's credit so far, he's the only one that's taken a game off of Punk recently. Punk has the opportunity to go 3-0 against Phenom now. He is working all his way, all the way back to Grand Finals after losing to CJ Truth in semis yesterday. That's right. Oh, but here we go. Phenom gets one command throw. Finally, a yeah. corner situation for Phenom. It's been a while, and this one he does capitalize on. He's going to be close to the round. He's a mix-up away. Oh, That's boy. it. He's in the corner all of a sudden. We've seen how well Punk has controlled it. Will oh, he get a stun? To stun? Super instead? No. no saves he's it. He's going to save it. And Super? No. Oh, he oh, must have done something. He Actually, did touch a button. I guess I don't know really whether Karen Super would have won in that situation, but he might have already committed anyway. Right, right. I mean, it I would think he could have done EXTP to get out of it if he had not been busy. So he probably was. Right, right. 
and I didn't see a look from Punk like, what the, you know, like there was no shock on him. It was right. almost like, yeah, you know what, I did touch a button. So much, much better round for Phenom. Oh, and okay, here we go. Look, he, he's now enforcing what he wants to do. It's been tough for him to find the opportunities, but his jumps have been better. Like, uh, okay, very important notification by Punk. He saw the jumps counting, and now what's he looking for? Jumps. Yep. Here we go, activates the V-Trigger, almost has a critical art. If he gets one hit right now, look at all this great health! It just all went away! He might as well have not blocked all those moves anyway! Here it is! Oh my god, finally gets the EX uppercut to connect! Dean on for his tournament life. Ooh, you are crazy punk, but you pulled it out! You got the EX for Senha as the anti-air, and after getting blown up that whole Man. round, Punk made Ridiculous. the comeback. Yeah, yeah, and, and he did it by no noticing that the jumps were starting to count from Fina, you know, right? Mm -hmm. Anti-air, anti-air. After that, he had the ground control, and then when he got the corner, what did Phenom try? Jump, and Punk was ready for it again. Uh, we're going to see yeah, some right of here. this here. Right, this so Phenom right having here. excellent control. One and just like that, you, you realize, oh, I'd been hit by Jump Pierce. Okay. Again. Yep, another anti-air. And then he controls the ground, just like that. And you can see Phenom just trying to block it out, just trying to play this But patient, Look so. at all the gray health that gets built up Right. Here. Watch this crowd, one crouch medium kick, boom, all right. gone. Yeah, yeah. And just excellent control. That was pretty wild. I don't know what that was, but it worked out for him. Right, so now, now that he's in this situation, he knows that he's pretty close to Chip. I love him coming in with the V-Trigger here, just to enforce his situation. And he was crouching. And you know what that crouch was about? You're gonna jump. I got my my controller is already in the down. All I yeah. need to do is rotate it a little bit and press the buttons, and I'm gonna anti air you. Yeah. And the nice he thing just was so ready. Nice thing about that anti air is it does hit a bubber a little bit pretty decently. Harder to jump over that. I think Phenom was trying to get to a range where he might have been able to cross hey. up, but didn't work out for him. You know, Phenom yeah. had also paddled as we said from the corner pretty well with buttons. Mm -hmm. It might have been that he was expecting that. Punk would look for buttons more <laughs> rather than the jump at that situation. Yeah. But Punk was ready for the that. One, the one thing I'll say about Punk, and you know, I feel this way about a lot of the other stronger players here in Street Fighter V, is that if you feel like you can condition players into thinking a certain way, that will be your downfall. Because guys like Punk are just unconditionable. They are just absolutely unconditionable. Like Same with Phenom, really. But, right. But when you're at that level... It's really about who gets things started first. If mm -hmm. you look back at that set and many of the sets we've had so far today, if somebody gets put in the corner, they're going to take some damage. <laughs> if they get knocked down, mix-ups might work. You know, right. it's just name of the game is avoid that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Punk did that very, very well. So don't we're going to move now. Don't be in that position. Yeah, just right. don't be in that position. Moving to winner's finals. Who gets into Ooh. grand finals right away? Who has to play Punk in loser's finals after Punk just is steamrolling, folks? in that lower side. Well, we've got two premier winners here, of course. Uh, Haitani just took UFA. Sien is the final round winner. And I really, really honestly believe Sien is kind of responsible for this uh, recent Ibuki surgence. You know, in season two, when it, when it was new, some folks, especially out in Japan, were saying that they thought Ibuki was mm -hmm. among the best. And, and Japan even Ibuki. felt that way for the longest time here in season two, even before, even before. Sien won. Correct. Yeah. And uh, I didn't quite believe it, just because I didn't feel like she had the same kind of ground control that characters like Balrog or Yurian had, you know, with their crush counter buttons. But it turns out that the way Sien, I mean, this is kind of like that Mika syndrome, right? Oh, Everyone's boy. like, oh, Mika has bad footsies in season Fine. one. And the Mika players figure out how to make it work. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like that's exactly what Sien has done here with Ibuki. He's figured out how to make the footsies work with her. But you know what? Haitani is trying to show me that I am completely wrong because yes. Haitani just destroyed, destroyed Sien in footsies right now. Yeah, well, Sien's been in this situation before. Uh, got, you know what? Trigger. One touch from Ibuki. He's got the EX. One Look crouching medium punch Look is all you need. Look how confident he was. He was so certain that Haitani was looking for a jump or was looking to play patiently that he walked up button, button, button. But Haitani continued to play patiently. And uh, worked out in his minute. Got the hit. Yep. So Haitani now taking from game round number one. Again, that V skill. Piercing attack. Leaning back again, avoiding it. He uses it at certain ranges, and most of the time you see Ibuki's do the full charge one because that one's safer on block. But uh, Sien knows how to use the 
the, 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 the non-charge version in footsie ranges where he can whiff punish moves almost automatically. The old great block on that bomb from Haitani. Oh, All right. Dashes right into it. And Sid nice now work. coming back here in round two, tying it up one to one. <laughs> Dang. All right. All right. Dang. You hear that, Nikali? All right. Trying to jump back for the air to air, but ends up trading. Oh, Ooh, interesting. Was that like a light uppercut? I think there? it was. Uh, yeah, yeah. From Cien? Yeah. I think it was. P people will use light uppercuts in situations where they need very fast buttons, but they don't want to risk getting crushed. Counted. Right. Mm -hmm. Risk losing the priority. So it's a very slow bolt. Stayed in the front. The wider the character is as well, it's harder to get behind. Oh no! Sien thought he could make it behind. Not gonna happen. Haitani spends a little bit of that meter to get the V-Trigger juggle. Now, just using those whiff option selects. Ibuki! I mean, Sien using the EX Kunai in the air to get in. And oh, oh. but Sien was not touching a button. We saw Haitani do that earlier. I'm surprised to have seen Sien not get a little bit more there, but... All right, he's still pressuring very well. Haitani defensively fighting from the corner. Any of those strongs might actually win the round if he finds one. Ooh. Strong blink, blink. buffer. Wow. Can he make it work? Look at that patience from Xian. He doesn't have EX. He doesn't have kunais. Yeah. How can he make something happen? It's too. Even if you're a no. screen away, you can't build up those kunais. Nikali movement too fast. Yeah, size mo, fast movement, just Nikali a bad look to build wins. again. Yeah. So you. You know, if you're Sienna, I think you could see the struggle. He didn't know what to do. He jumped, and Haitani expected it. Wow, so Haitani takes game number one. Trying Round to one. Uh, establish a collection Fight. here. Of first place trophies from CPT events. Finally got his first one at UFA. So happy about it on social media. And he was proud to be able to bring that home to his wife. Gonna try to uh, build a collection of those. Good start so far, but here comes Sien. Stayed in the front again. It's so hard to tell what side of Buki is going. Oh yeah, very very tough. You just don't want to be in that spot. Yep. Oh, lovely movement. All of a sudden he was okay. up close. Oh. Stayed in the front. That was so genius. Okay, and he had the bomb to make it safe just in case it was blocked. Man, Love that was it. Genius. And you know what? It's like. Sien, I feel like he comes up with these things better than other people does do, you know? He's always been a lap monster. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's what made his Gen so scary in Street Fighter 4 because he had all the tech. Ooh, didn't whip punish in time, and there was definitely a whip stand heavy punch from Haitani. Okay. Back dash avoided, but too close for the command jump for Sien okay. to get that cross up. So Haitani was able to walk under get a bit more damage than the stun. Haitani now Final on the round. verge of trying to take this to 2-0. Had one round mm. apiece here. Lovely game expectation. Two. He comes in with the command grab. Corner just like that. But Sien getting out. Sien's wake up. Uh, he, he's like Phenom as well. He's got some a high success rate on those EXs. Okay, just goes for the uppercut. Didn't even go for the mix-up. Not sure if he just dropped the, the command jump combo. I love that as a landing punish. That was great. Yeah. Uh, you saw him try to delay that jump jab off of the command jump as pos late as possible so he could get the cross under. Now Trigger's ready for Sien. See if he can find any opportunities for it. He has Itani near the corner now. He's backing up a little bit. Maybe. Oh, interesting. I feel like Sien just wants to avoid a situation where Itani can get activation, but... Okay, making it work. Making it no, work! Another one! Yep. Where's the bomb? No, saves it. He oh, wanted something! Ooh, is he gonna critical art? Yes! And that's gonna take game two for Haitani. He goes up 2 0 versus Sid No, yet. hold on, hold on, hold on. Ooh, hold on. Okay. Eli, Eli, you have done me wrong here. Wow. Eli told me that super always kills. Almost, almost. But it didn't and kill Sien, that time. I'm glad he kept his head in the game because I was watching his face while that super was going on and he just kind of like nodded his head and he looked resigned. <laughs> and he saw he was alive. But yeah, look, look at this. It was something from Sien. What did he want here? Ah, uh, yex. To try to maybe try to enforce a mix up. But Haitani right. was already doing stuff. Well, I did say if it didn't kill. You know, that was uh, Eli's corollary to that rule, so. All right, Haitani up two games to zero. 
Gets the crush counter into the stun. Haitani wow. is on fire yeah, here. Look at this guy. Even when it seems like Sien has an advantage, he makes the comeback or he finds a moment. Look how ready he was there for Mario. And now just control. Oh, patience! But Sien was in range for a grab. Well, this is what a Buki can do to you. One, one or two hits into the mix-up. Seriously. Wow. That is so strong. He is so confident. If and especially against a character like Ibuki, you get a, a, a crush counter there, and you get another mix-up, and that might be death for Nikali or very close, but he was willing to take the risk. Oh, but you... Was that? So that's a way you can escape Ibuki's mix-up, because there's that counter hit pushback syndrome, and you can do that against Ibuki if she dashes oh. under you like that. What a time to jump. Of course, Sin wants to build B-skills. Man, look at him chasing him down with those four dashes. All of a sudden, yeah, there's been a lot of back and forth, but now it's fourth. All right, look at this. Not activating the bomb in a setup situation. Still managed yeah. to get the mix-up. One that's, more. That's what he wanted last time. Haitani pressed the button. Now Haitani was ready. He jumped. We're back to neutral. Oh, Haitani's gonna get it. Ex uppercut. Haitani is in grand finals. He sends Sien to the loser side. Sien is gonna have to play P in P losers. Finals to see if he can get the rematch versus Haitani. So look, we have these top three. These are the three who have won premieres so far this year. Mm -hmm. All right, Sien, then uh, Haitani, Punk, one, and CR. I feel like that is amazingly consistent. <laughs> I have to tell you. Uh, so these and, are and these are three players who I really feel have uh, figured out SF5 in a way that mm -hmm. many other people haven't. If you recall, in Street Fighter Five Season One. Infiltration figured it out first. Right. For sure. Yes. yes. He figured out that uh, what you want to do is avoid situations and control things. And over time, people really caught up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nash had some changes, right? People could react faster once things were changed. And he kind of fell off a little bit. He never really recovered it. But in, in season five, in season two, two. Uh, these, I think, are the three who are really at the forefront of, of movement again. They're really at the forefront of mix-ups. Yes. They're really at the forefront of, of understanding what it is that all the characters want to do. And I think it's, you know, remarkable that these are the <laughs> final three. So Haitani is going to be in grand finals. Whether he will play against Punk or against Sien, I don't know. Sien has, has been very strong today, you know, uh, this, this weekend. His, his route through here uh, was certainly not easy. He beat Alex Myers. He beat Ricky Ortiz. Uh, he beat Yukadon. Mm -hmm. that, you know, those were his post-pool matchups. So that's impressive. But I'll tell you, Punk, <laughs> again, we, we've talked about it. Punk's march has been against Magneto 1080p, a strong Texas player, against Vagabond, who, uh, you know, has beaten Vago and is a strong player himself. Didn't lose a game against Vagabond. Didn't lose a game against Shaohai. Didn't lose a game against Daigo, Ricky Ortiz, Snake, Snake Eyes. Eyes. And then Justin Wong took one game. And then just like that, he recovered it, and he didn't lose the game against Phenom. I don't know how you get any better than that kind of gauntlet. Have we seen Punk versus Sien yet? Have we seen these two guys go up against each other? I don't know, but I'll, I'll, check, I'll check the old FGCBattles.com, and I'll get back to you after okay. this. Quick break. We'll have the Losers Finals coming up in just a little bit.
Third strike, yo. Yo, check it out now. Third strike, yo. Yo, check it out now. Third strike, yo. Capcom Pro Tour 2017, presented by PlayStation 4, brought to you by Zowie, a brand by BenQ, the official monitor of the Capcom Pro Tour. Razer, the official Street Fighter V fight stick of the Capcom Pro Tour. HyperX, the official headset of the Capcom Pro Tour. And Twitch, home of the Capcom Pro Tour. And we're back here at DreamHack Austin. We are in losers finals. It's Sin all the way from Singapore going up against the Alpha, the Street Fighter Alpha Punk from Philadelphia here right in the United States. Winner of this gets to go up against Haitani in grand finals. Definitely going to be a Karen versus a Buki matchup here. Mm -hmm. they, I would think. Two, these two have not faced each other in an official tournament yet. They have played each other only in casuals. And, uh... Yeah, Punk's thoughts about that were that it was basically 50-50. If he gets things going first, hey, then he's going to get it. And if the Buki gets things going first, then, well, she's going to get it. And I really think that that plays in with what we've been talking about today, about how primary goal is to control things in a way that does not even involve you block, right? That does not even involve you having to deal with the other guy's things. You need Round to move one. well and you need to control things Fight. well and if you don't then, you know, good luck. Alright, once again, Sien starting off with great usage of that B skill. Like I said, he just has immaculate usage of that tool. It, it, I feel like it's one of the main reasons why his Abuki doesn't suffer as much in footsies as some other Abukis does. Oh, there was that light kick uppercut trade again. 
So no priority system working for... Oh, here we go! He got the hit into the setup, okay? Oh, look at that! And wow, he jumped early, and that was a wow. really, really uh, reactionary throw attempt, counter throw attempt from... Well, oh, oh, hold on now! He hold on it. now! Punk is very much in this. If he finds it, and he did! Punk, can he take it? All he needs to do is finish this. I don't know what... Sien usually has that set up into the Rider, but it looked like instead he, like, with a jump kick. I'm not sure what happened exactly there. <laughs> and yeah, you can see Sien there, kind of with that, with the, with the standard fighting game player head tilt. Mm -hmm. The, huh, okay. That's how it goes. Okay. Both with very similar view skills. Similar range, but Karen controls things from more ranges than Ibuki does. Oh, baits out the throw again. This time from Punk. Much better round for Punk. He needed the comeback last time, but right now he's controlling. Does that mean, oh though, that Sien's going to get it? Does Sien get this change just like this? What a block. Yeah, Punk said, you know what? You're going for the double cost. Oh, oh, I'm aware of that. Fierce? Yeah. Punk, like I said, he uses that button better than anybody else that I've ever seen play this character. That is for sure. Oh, Sien now still trying with a to play patient. Bomb. He doesn't want to jump because he sees Punk crouching. He knows that Punk is just looking for stuff. And so Sien, the question is, how can he battle on the ground? He has, certainly has plenty of time. That's not the issue. But he can't take any hits. He did. Game one goes to Punk. Great whiff punish once again from Green. Punk. Like I said, this guy's reactions are ridiculous. Look at this. Oh! I mean, there's quite a bit of startup there, but you have to be at exactly the right spot. You have to have it in mind. <laughs> if, I see, if I see X, then my reaction is Y, and why not? It and was right there. Stood in the exact range for that to work out. And as we mentioned before, Sien's super good at using... Oh, God, again, he whip punished the B-Skill with his own B-Skill. Punk right now just doing such a great job standing right outside of the range. Right now, Punk again. B-Skill to whip punish the B-Skill. That's twice already that he's done that here in this round. He knows that that's Sien's go-to footsie button. Footsie attack, I should say. And he has whip punished it so many times. Here we go. It, oh, yeah, didn't, didn't have, have the meter. meter didn't right. have the meter, but gets the throw. It all works out. Look, James, the streak is continuing. Oh, we oh my about god. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Punk got a stun, and there was no tree bagging. Oh, no, he's in serious mode, man. <laughs> There's no screwing around. Look at that. Jump in. What a start. You don't see it very often, and maybe that's why it worked. Punk all of a sudden in the corner. Oh, all of a sudden the crush. God. Can he get the stun? No, Not he didn't have bar. yet. Just needs one more thing, and there it is, the overhead. That was like a replay of the last round, but on the other side. And now the block. Sien, can he make oh, it happen? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Into the kunai. Boom. Karen, not much reset. life. She can't take oh, the hit. Oh, what a block from Punk. And Punk just going back the to this control. I punish. I don't even know what button Sien pressed. It, it no. was so fast, and Punk had the sweep out win. already. And then just immediate dash up for the throw. Punk takes that one just like that. You know, if you forgot to set your watch, uh, Look at that. you can you can set how exactly how long a minute is by how long it's taken Punk to go up 2-0 on one of the best players in the world. Because it was as fast as it could be. 2-0, just like that. He has, like we said, beat, he beat Phenom, he beat Justin Wong, Green Snake Eyes, Wong. Ricky Ortiz, Daigo, Shaohai, Vagbon. Magneto 1080p, and he only lost two games in that whole stretch. And Sien <laughs> has not been able to take another one. Doesn't Punk. matter how much I curse you, fella. You're doing you're doing the good work yourself. Punk right now. Two games. Oh, oh man! He went back to the guy from season one. Now I don't think that this matchup is that bad. Actually, yesterday I was talking with Mono about it. Another very very strong Fang. And uh, he doesn't believe that this is like a bad matchup necessarily. In fact, he, he stuck with it against Justin. He did lose, but he stuck with it. Fang has uh, some buttons that can control Karen all right. Uh, he can he can certainly play some mix-ups on her all right. Uh, in terms of controlling her movement, he's he's he can do it. It's just that you don't deal damage. You just really don't. Right. And it's it's hard to control with projectiles. You have this big floaty jump. Whereas if she gets in. You just are out of luck. The thing about it is, you, you notice one thing right now? How many times has Sien already whiffed attacks? He's whiffed the crowd crouch kick, the standing heavy punch. Punk is just literally the best at making you miss your buttons. He is so good at standing at these ranges. You know, I remember in Street Fighter 4, 
talking with Xian once about how happy he was that he made some people whiff attacks. That was like something he specifically looked for and did well at, and he was great at it. And now even Xian is whiffing things because of where Punk's playing with his movement and playing oh with his Oh my god, the what? Really? The down forward fierce? Why would you even press crouching strong there? But he expected it. Look at this from Punk. Oh he is mauling. He is a grinder. He is grinding up everybody Staying in this tournament. In the front and that's it. Just like that. Three games for Punk in, I don't even know, like a blink of an eye. Blink of an eye. You could have gone to the bathroom and you're coming back right now and you're hoping to see Losers Finals. Well, wait for the VOD. It.